Hello everybody and welcome to the newest Let's Play for this channel. This is a sweet little gem called The Wild at Heart. I played this in my own free time. I just stumbled across it and I just love it. This game is so fun, it's cute, it's charming, and it kind of has a bit of nostalgia because it reminds me a lot of some games I played when I was younger. And for those of you who are going to watch this and follow along, you'll probably notice where this game takes some inspiration from. I want to just take a quick moment before I get started to thank all of my patrons over on Patreon. I was able to purchase this game using Patreon funds. So thank you to every single one of my viewers, subscribers, and patrons for all of your support. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now, this game actually underwent a lot of changes, and it had a few patches and such since I played it the first time. I am playing the Steam version. I originally played the Xbox One version. And one of the things that they did was they added a mode that kind of makes this game a little bit more challenging. So they didn't have a difficulty level when I played it. So I'm assuming I played it on the Wanderer difficulty, and that's just what we're going to go with. There really is no need to play this on Adventurer mode. I think it would just sort of drag things out, to be honest. This game isn't necessarily centered around combat, so making the combat a little bit more difficult just isn't for me for the sake of this Let's Play, but it is nice that you get the option. Okay, Wake, you've prepared for this. Time to enact the plan. Just need to gather my supplies. Alright. So, obviously, this game has no voiceover work. I will do my very best to try and read most of it. I do know it gets a little bit tiresome uh, for me to read a lot of dialogue, and this game does sometimes have a lot of dialogue. But for those of you who like to just sort of listen to Let's Plays and not necessarily watch them all of the time, I don't want you to miss out on dialogue. So I'm going to try and find kind of a nice happy medium where I'm not reading every single word to kind of drag things out. But everybody will be able to know what's going on, whether you like to actually sit and watch these or whether you just like to listen. So we're in Wake's room and we're going to just go ahead and grab three things. In the left corner here we have the plants. And he reminds us to grab the blueprints which are up on the workstation here. So there's our map and then in the bottom right we have our gaming system. Priorities, indeed. All right, so we've got everything that we need from Wake's room. We can go ahead and go upstairs. If this game interests you, I do recommend taking more time to kind of explore the world. There's a lot of things that you can interact with. You can get lots of additional dialogue. But again, for the sake of the Let's Play, not just to drag things out, I'm not going to really be taking the time to observe all of my surroundings all the time. He's gone. Good. I made some fuel rations this morning before he left and I just need to grab them. Alrighty. So, his field rations are in the refrigerator. He made himself a delicious PB&J. One thing left to do, I guess. 
He's leaving a note to say that he's running away and don't come looking for him. He probably won't read it anyways. Time to go. I'm gonna go ahead and grab these cheesy chippers out of the toolkit here. I forgot I hid these in here. I'll bring them along. They might be handy in a pinch. So we're going to go into the backyard here and there's a lot more tutorial in this little area that I can give everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and kick these trash bags. As you can see, they kind of have like a life bar on them. And when you destroy them, obviously they open up and they give you some stuff. Sometimes you'll have items, uh, but a lot of the time you're going to pick up scrap. And scrap is a form of currency in this game. It's really important to have, but you don't need to go out of your way to kick every single thing that you can because you have a lot of opportunity to pick up scrap along the way. We're going to shoot for 200 pieces of scrap for now. And then I'm going to go ahead and pick up our gust buster. So this is a vacuum that Wake built himself. And this is kind of not really our weapon, but this is definitely Wake's really, really important item that we're going to be using a lot in this game. And I mean a lot. So if we want to go ahead and use it, you can use it on uh, different items and obstacles. So these leaf piles we can use them on for now and we're gonna vacuum up all the leaf piles here and pick up the backyard key and that's pretty much all that we need to do in this area uh, the vacuum right now we can use infinitely you can see that there's no uh, issues with using this so you can just vacuum to your heart's content So we're going to go out and meet with our friend Kirby. And I just hope she was able to make it out okay. Time to get the heck out of here. And even though Wake has his map... He, unfortunately, is still lost. This game has stunning visuals. I absolutely love these type of graphics and art design. And it also has really, really beautiful music as well. So there's really a lot in this game to enjoy. From the way it sounds, to the way it looks, to the way it plays. And I really, really hope that everybody will enjoy this. It's been quite a while since I've played an adventure game. So Wake is crying, he's upset. Obviously he's lost, which means that his friend Kirby can't find him either. Huh? Hello? Who's there? Whoa! What are you? Hey, wait! Alright, so you can see here that uh, we've got scrap laying around, so feel free to pick that up. You've got little windmills 
around and if you uh, vacuum them they'll give you some scrap we've also got uh, some leaf piles and such along the way for the sake of the let's play i can do a lot of uh grinding so to speak off screen so if i want to gather scrap i will probably do that on my own outside of recording because i could spend a lot of time uh, breaking down trash piles and such. So these gates usually you can get rid of by vacuuming windmills. And when you hear the click, you can let go. The gate will be locked in place and you're free to pass. So obviously we just need to follow this little guy, whoever he is. Gotta try and find out where he's going. Looks like he's trying to lead us somewhere. But the windmill is all the way over here. And then obviously if you see boxes laying around, those are always good to open. At the moment, we're just getting scrap because we're so early uh, on, but we will be getting uh, random items and such later as well. Whoa, look at that tree. It's really, really pretty. Well, I guess I'm going in. You don't really have much of a choice, Wake. You're lost. You have nothing to lose. he fell somehow. I'm not really sure how he managed to fall after entering the tree, but he's okay. Now where am I? So here we have some old weirdo Who are you? My folk call me Greycoat. You have entered the deep woods. Few are allowed here, probably. Greycoat. That's your name? I think so. Okay, but your coat is more of like a greenish brown. This is a different coat. And you are? Wake? Wake. Hmm. Wake. What an oddly pleasant name, probably. Oh, hello again. There's our little creature that we were following. There you are, Brussel. You know good and well that you're not supposed to leave the deep woods. It's not every day that a sprightling befriends an outsider. That you can even see them is a feat in itself. You're a strangely small and unwrinkled old man. Are you ill? You should tell me if you are. What? I'm not an old man. Hmm. Brussel tells me they found you crying. Why? But no, I wasn't. I so what? It's rude to sneak up on people. What even is that creature? Whoa there, unwrinkled one. There will be time for questions later. I must hasten to my people. There is much stuff to be done. Besides, the dark will be coming soon, and what is it that we always say about the dark? Who's we? I just met you. Incorrect. We say, the dark is bad, the dark is bad. Good, okay. Let that be your first lesson. First lesson. Take this. It is an item most essential to the people of my order. Behold, I give you shiny rock. 
<laughs> so here we go. We get a shiny rock from Grey Coat, and this will basically allow us to talk to the companions that we meet along the way. And this is very, very similar to the stone in Wind Waker, and that is immediately what I thought of when I started playing this for the first time. It's a crystal? Hmm, I don't know. We call it shiny rock. Shiny rock will guide you. Guide me where? Wait! Nature ho! Take me to the, um, the place, the, uh, foliage. Ah, the grove, that's it. I almost forgot what our village was called. That would have been embarrassing. Bye bye I must be dreaming. Kirby's never gonna believe this. Well, I wonder if you hit your head in that fall wake. It's quite possible, but we are now locked in and we really have nowhere to go except for forward. Wake. Wake, can you hear me? Hmm, the crystal is talking. Greycoat, is that you? So we're just going over how the crystal works. And Greycoat is going to tell us to look for his friend Scrap Heap. Scrap Heap. Your friend's name is Scrap Heap. Indeed, he will help you, probably. And though traversing the undergrowth may seem daunting, the Spritelings are often keen to help. Spritelings? You mean the little yellow guys? Quite so! They are denizens of this world and, dare I say, part of the deep woods itself. Use them for guidance, they'll know what to do. With your device and their aid, you should easily be able to make it to scrap heap. But how do I contact you on this thing? Ah, yes, well. I usually just picture the person in my head and then loudly scream their name into the crystal. That seems to work some of the time. Okay. No time to waste. Onward. Ah, yes. Grey Coat is a very, very special, special guy. And we are getting on in time. Now, this is an easy game to get kind of carried away with. There is, like I said, quite a bit of talking and dialogue, especially at the beginning of the game like this when we're getting a huge overload of information. I do promise, though, that this game is pretty simple and straightforward once we get past all of the tutorial stuff. The first few videos are going to be a lot of tutorials, so please bear with me. I hope that this first episode has grabbed your attention. I hope you look forward to seeing and hearing more of this game. I guarantee that it's a really, really wonderful adventure all the way through, and I'm really, really looking forward to playing this for you all. So thank you so very, very much for watching. We will continue on from this point where Wake is standing in the next episode.